So, this is Nick Lowry, my buddy Andre Gorin here at Winsong Dojo, and we're going to go through the uh, number three chain series, the Rinzoku from the number, third, number three release. Um, functionally, we have a mirror hand attack that's moving off through space and out and around into the same kind of condition. Very similar condition that we experienced at the first release at the end. And if we had the same kind of potential for grip right here, we could have that same dropping him in a hole with the step that we did in number one release. That is functionally what's going on right off the bat. We have a little grip where our thumb is underneath, extending the step, and we have an elbow to elbow type wakigatami. Now that's been called the wakigatami that's a, a Goshen Jitsu form because boom, it hits him right here with this surface and it's bone on bone contact and if you were to do it in a fast hard percussive kind of semi-violent way probably break his arm high probability of that so we're learning how to get ourselves into that spot but to do it nicely and delicately with you know peace and love and harmony and aikido so we have a wakigatami that's a self-defense form right here that comes right off little grip wakigatami happens cool right there as he survives it, basically surviving this in terms of how we're describing it is outrunning it. He gets away from it, makes separation. If all that happens on his separation is that you just keep your hands proximate to each other and in your center, you have a very small hand change that's required to take it into Kota Gaishi right there. And so the first two are basically a self-defense form of wakigatami, boom, to an extension form or moving away form of Kota Gaishi. In the second set, we, we again began with self-defense wakigatami. And this wonderful Kota Gaishi out here. But then we have a, uh, a, uh, uh, a follow through of shomenate. So we know that every time we're doing a Kota Gaishi, for instance, we have this go away form. We also have the one that reaches right up the middle, where Shomanate is backing up to Kodageshi. So we want to do that as well. Wakigatami, Shomanate with the Kodageshi. Wakigatami, Shomanate. Now, if he pushes off that Shomanate, doesn't like that Shomanate in his face, we have an endless loop that develops because we do another wakigatami and another one and another wakigatami and another one so you can basically get high reps of yeah just peel off feed to the next we'll do it real slow right here for the camera to see wakigatami he peels off curl feed shomenate curl feed curl, feed. There we go. So you get this infinite loop thing. You also have a potential for the other kind of wakigatami, the more classical form. That occurs because we're doing wakigatami. He outruns it. We have kutagaishi. We don't close on him. He survives that somehow. And when he survives that somehow, we actually have the opportunity to cover the elbow and the upper arm and do the more, I don't know, classical form of this thing which is wakigatami that completely doesn't just impact the elbow, but encompasses the arm. <laughs> the one that's elbow to elbow, the move away, he survives that. Whoa, there's the big one. Slips right in over the top. If he survives the big one, <laughs> boom, that's where this next thing comes from. That's where the shomenate form slips in. So I got ahead of myself there a little earlier. Elbow to elbow, go away wakigatami. Elbow over the top, big classical wakigatami. Now the shomenate is almost a sure bet. Because if he survives the classical wakigatami, the proximity of your inside hand becomes a really deadly option for you. Boom, boom, boom. He outruns this, boom, the shot here. This is where he pu pushes this off, doesn't like this anymore. The curl happens, we feed, and we're in the elbow-to-elbow -elbow form. 
to the move away Kodageshi, to the classical Wakigatami, to the inside Shomanate uh, Kodageshi. So you could potentially just do nothing but that fixed loop for a good long while. Now off of number three, release, that all deals with the condition of what happens, let's get by the camera here, that as you make the position with your hands, your thumb winds up underneath. That's where we get this set of grips into wakigatami form. What happens if your palm is encountering that? Well, then it's hikitaoshi form. And we have the hikitaoshi form that we did in number one series that says, yo, and then to here, and then to here, and then out to Kota Haneri, and Kota Haneri Shomanate, right? To Kota Gaishi. So, Anytime you find yourself in the hikitaoshi form, that's fine too. It just has to do with the initial condition of how things have set up in terms of the grappling. If there's no grip at all, and you've, let's say mirror side please, you're right in here and we're coming around, there's no grip entirely, everything breaks loose, you're gonna wind up in a cross hand position because as this fails, somewhere in this process it fails, the other hand has to get in charge. <laughs> and that becomes a whole Mawashi series. And so, oh, it gripped entirely wrong. Mawashi happened and out in here and out and around. And so, depending on the initial condition of what's happened between your uke and yourself and the, and the position of your thumb and the hand relative to the wrist, you can wind up in any of those states without even trying, basically. The other major thing that gets in here from a number three release position, we'll start here, is that you have the number seven stuff as well. Again, just like in, in the first release where I said, oh, you do number one release and then he climbs up your back. Say, so, oh, you go ahead and climb up my back. Say, wow, I better slip under, right? That becomes a grappling form of how we get to number five. If we are in number three and he begins to close with us significantly, under the arm is a nice place to go. Now by slipping under the arm into this seventh release form basically, we're going to have an unusual condition right here in the middle of it. Let's step over here. Right here in the middle of it, my back is to the guy. I don't really know where he's at. He's behind me right now. <laughs> I don't have eyes in my head. And as I move from this position, a set of bifurcating functions happens. I'm not sure which it's going to be. I start moving away from it, and if he is closing directly to me, let's say he's right on top of me, whoa, I'm gonna be in his face. And we have something that's a lot like a uh, kite and nagi here. Let's do that one. So this just happens. When I'm in this position, I begin to turn, and everything is very tight. Wow, looky there, kite and nagi. If it's tighter yet, you can actually wind up with a form where you curl under his head like this. <laughs> and you do a little Garuma-esque action. You take your hand around their head and curl like you're reaching your middle finger to his ear. Let's do a shot of that if we can. So let's turn this way to the camera. Good. You find yourself really tight and close. For whatever reason, the kite nagi doesn't quite seem to be the trick of the day. But as this hand encounters the head, instead of pushing and driving for kite nagi, you have a curl function right here. Yeah. And you're turning his head and neck and causing his whole body to rotate like this. And it uh, causes them to do a tight little garuma in the air. It's kind of interesting. So there's a whole set of conditions from this indeterminate state that say, oh, I'm really close. Or, Oh, I'm a little further out. If I'm a little further out, head and then shoulder, wow, you have this hikitaoshi thing. A little further out yet, hey, I'm at his elbow. Elbow control here. A little further out yet, hey, there's that mawashi we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Isn't that cool? A little further out yet and you find out that this hand is gonna fail entirely and this hand has to be the boss. And so you wind up behind his arm. And so 
rather than a strict chaining idea from one failure to the next, you're actually looking at a wide set of branches. Indeterminacy occurs. Are we going to be really close? Are we going to be this far? Are we going to be this far? Are we going to be this far? This far? This far? Way out into space, out to here. And once we're out here, then you work all the way back up the arm to all the conditions that occur in these states as well. So functionally, in the broad brush ideas, seven becoming forms of Kaitanagi, seven becoming forms of Hikiotoshi, seven becoming forms of Kotamawashi here, seven becoming forms of Kotamawashi pass off and behind the arm. So we're now we're in an Oshitoshi form. Seven, pass off behind the arm. Now we have this Gyakugami Atsu form that comes in. And last but not least, seven, slips away hands off to Mawashi, we're working in this, it ain't working, brush up and enter for the Gaidenate. So this brushing up function gets in here, it's kind of interesting. He's already in a slightly compromised position from this Mawashi and as we're moving through space and I'm just not getting any satisfaction, this hand slips and everything rises straight up in, a, in an upward coil, causes a little balance disruption. We put it in motion, there's this down, there's this up, there's this down, there's this up, there's this down. Yeah, <laughs> looks kind of like that. So you're really, in this series, more than most up till this point, you start becoming highly sensitized to the rise and fall here. Three is down, seven is up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, and you're learning to make your changes at those particular moments of the peaks and valleys of the rise and fall. The transitional stuff in between is where you're rearranging yourself in relation to their body. But functionally, the real magic stuff is happening right there at the bottom and at the top. He's down and he's up. So that's number three. Thank you very much.